Welcome to Object Oriented Programming with Java Part 1 Exercises, well week 1, Exercises 20 through 22 in this video. Okay, so this is based on the exercises found here. This is the English version of the MOOC Java course from Finland, I guess the University of Helsinki. And we're going to start here on exercise 20. Previous videos have the exercises up to here. So in this one, we are creating a program that recognizes two users, Alex and Emily. Alex's password is Mighty Ducks, and Emily's password is Cat. So it checks for the username and password. And if it's correct, you are logged into the system. If it is incorrect, you, your username or password was invalid. It says here, remember, you cannot compare strings with the equals operation. So that is a good thing to know um, because Java does things the Java way. So, and there's a reason for that, but it's, it's, it's a bit advanced and you don't need to know, worry about that right now. Um, as a review from before, we're going to be using import java.util.scanner. And then we're going to create a scanner object. So scanner, we're going to call it reader. It is a new scanner, and it is using the system in, in this case, the keyboard to read data. Um, so we are asking the user for two things, your uh, username and your password. So system out.println. I could just do print, uh, but it's kind of a habit. So I'm going to just use print ln and print line, however you want to say it. So type your username, semicolon, and then we want to say uh, username equals reader dot next line. If you're not sure what this does, this is came from, we did this in the previous videos, but basically we're using this reader object to get a line of text from the uh, standard input. And so now I'm just going to copy that, paste it, and type your password. And instead of username, of course, I'm going to put this as password. Okay. Now what we have to do is compare the usernames and the passwords to make sure they equal the proper values. Now we're just going to be using some simple if statements. And so if, so username. Now watch what, I'm, what, what you can't do is this. If username equals, I think, what was it, Alex? I think it was the first, oh, Alex. Okay, you cannot do that, and that's that's a common mistake. Java, you have to do equals when you're comparing strings and put parentheses around it. So if the username equals Alex and the password password dot equals, I think says was Mighty Ducks. Okay, we say system dot out dot print ln. Uh, what was it, what it say? You are now, oops. You are now logged into the system. Okay. And now we're going to add the code for the other person, uh, which was Amy. So say, well, we'll use else if. So else if, so if it's not, that's not correct. And I'm just going to copy all this stuff. There's no point in re redoing it. So in this case, so we had Amy and her password was cat. Okay, so in this case, those are the two successful logins. Um, of course, this is poor program and security design, but here we go. And this is just for practice. System.out.println and we're going to say, say your username or say and or password uh, was invalid and semicolon. So we're going to test that. And again, it's one of those things where you should, oops, have an error. Mr. Mr. Parenthesis somewhere. Ah, okay. So notice there should be a parenthesis here and a parenthesis at the end matching that. So these two parentheses match, these two parentheses match, and the same thing here because I copied it. Okay, so I should have tested it before I copied it. Live and learn. But I'm kind of running out of time here, so I gotta get this recorded. Oh my gosh, now it's getting worse. <laughs> Oops. Um, so everybody's probably sitting out there going, the error's right there in front of your face. 
Okay, so let's read it and go up to cannot find symbol. Oh, duh. Um, okay, so I, again, my Python background's biting me here. Uh, string, string. I forgot to declare the type. Okay, live and learn. Okay, and I still have errors. Cannot find symbols. Okay, so I, it's pointing here. So line 18. So you can see I spelled password wrong. And password. Yeah, I've been recording these videos for a couple hours now. It's kind of, you see I'm starting to make mistakes. Um, but it's good to look and to see how you fix those things. So username. So we had Alex and he was Mighty Ducks. I spelled that wrong. Invalid. And I'll try that again. Alex Mighty Ducks. And they're logged in the system. And then again, you would test Amy and Cat and make sure everything is working as it should. Okay, and then we've got one more to record. I've got 10 minutes to do it. Ooh, no, I've got two more to record and I've got 10 minutes to do it. So let me uh, see if we can get through this real quickly uh, before the bell rings. And so leap year. Um, this one actually took me a little bit of time to figure out because it was a little confusing about you know, how to calculate the leap year. So it's very interesting. A year is a leap year if it's divisible by four. We know that. So 2000, 2004, uh, 2008, et cetera, et cetera. But if the year is divisible by 100, it is a leap year only if it's also divisible by 400. So for example, 1800 is not a leap year, even though you can divide it by four. It has to be divisible. If, so because this is divisible, divisible by 100, this is divisible by 100, but it's also divisible by four by 400. So it is a leap year. Okay, so it's a little bit of uh, nested logic there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that all that stuff. And please type the year. And it's not going to be a string, it's going to be an int. And of course, I'm going to change that to year. And oh, because it's an integer, we got to do integer dot parse int. And if you don't know what this does, you need to go back and check some of the previous examples. It's explained there. And what we got to do is to go. So if year is divisible by four, so this is the same thing as the even odd division. So divided by four, if there's no uh, remainder, it's evenly divisible. Okay, so 1600 divided by four is 400, nothing left over. Okay, and again, if you don't know what that means, you need to go back and review. Um, and then here's the, the hard part, and I think this is right. But we'll test it. If year percent 100 equals 0. So if it is divisible by 100, it's so like 1800, 2000, it must also be divisible by, or must not be divisible by 400. Or it must be divisible by 400. So watch what I do here. dot out dot print ln this the year is not a leap year okay because according to the rules if it's divisible by 100 it has to also be divisible by 400 okay so if it's not divisible by 400 then it's not a leap year so 1800 is divisible by 100 but it's not divisible by 400 so it's not a leap year otherwise all other cases, you have system.out.println, the year is a leap year. Okay. Now, you also down here, if it's not divisible by 4, it's not a leap year. So, you know, 2001 is not divisible by 4. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy that, save myself a little time. Okay. You probably have to slow down, watch this video a couple times, and try to think about the logic. Uh, but it's, uh, I think this is going to work. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try uh, 1800 because that was one of the examples. Not a leap year. Good. So far, so good. I'm going to try 2000, which is a leap year. Very good because it's divisible by 100 and divisible by 400. And then I'll try 2004, which is a leap year. And then I'll also do real quick 2003, for example. Not a leap year. So so far so good. I think it, I think that will hold for 
other cases. Okay, last one. And we got eight minutes before the bell rings. So let's power on through that. So 22 password. Okay, in this exercise, we create a program that asks the user for a password. If the password is right, a secret message is shown to the user. So we're gonna be using a, a loop here because we want the program to keep repeating. And again, all of this information is here on this page. It's explaining it. I'm just going through and explaining the exercises, a little quick walkthrough for each one. Um, and I do have some other videos on my YouTube channel that walk you through some basic Java stuff that might help you with this. So I'm gonna go back to this and, uh, well, I guess I should read this real carefully. So we create a program that asks the user for the password. If it's right, the message is shown to the user. And the password is caret. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna delete the stuff I don't need. And I say here, you know, type the password. And again, I don't need to convert it. We need a string here. I'm not gonna make the mistake I made earlier. I'm gonna say string password. Okay, so then we're gonna use a while true loop. Okay, and again, if you don't know what that means, you need to, to read the materials or watch some other videos explain this. Um, a while true loop will keep the program running. So system.out.println. Oops, my bad. I should have put this in here. because we wanna keep asking that information inside the loop until it's correct. So if user, okay. So string password equals caret. I'm kinda of making mistakes here, I apologize. Um, so I'm gonna, the user is gonna ask for the user password and it's gotta match the correct password because the instructions actually say to create a string called password. So if user password dot equals, okay, and we're not using double equal signs like we saw before, equals uh, password. So if they are equal, we're going to break out of the loop. Okay. And actually also say system dot out dot print Right. Okay. So we're going to say print right on the screen and break out of this while true loop and go to the next line after that. Else system.out.println wrong. It's not very nice. And then once we break out of the loop, system.out.println, and what was it? It was something really weird. If I recall correctly, um, is it system dot oops. The secret is J sorry J R Y Y Q B A R and parenthesis at the end. Okay, so let's run that. See if we get any errors. So we'll say that. wrong. Type the password. Wrong, and caret, right, and the secret is J-R-Y-Y-Q-B-A-R, program ends. So what's happening here is this while true loop just keeps going forever until we break, okay? So you say system.out.println, type the password, get the password, compare it to the password we set up here. If it's correct, break. Break doesn't stop the program, it just breaks out of this loop and goes to the next line after the loop is over. Okay. Now, if it's wrong, just print wrong, and the loop continues until we get it right or we end the program. And that is that. Um, I did not do, like before, I didn't do numbers 23 uh, because I don't have the graph component uh, in Replit. And 24, again, as, as before, I don't have the uh, NHL statistics pack package or whatever component. Uh, that's included, so I can't do that with Repolit. And again, you you may have all that stuff installed. That's great. Go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, but again, this is for beginners and people online uh, because setting up a Java environment can be a bit complicated and picky, uh, and it'll differ depending on your IDE a little bit. So this will hopefully uh, get beginners a little bit over that hump uh, with coding. 
So yeah, thanks for watching, and I, I hope you uh, uh, learned something from these. I apologize for all the little mistakes, but it's good to see that process. Nobody codes something 100% correctly uh, the first time. And uh, debugging, you probably spend as much time debugging as you do actually writing code. So uh, yeah, good luck on your Java studies. Uh, thanks for uh, tagging along.